if I needed to keep it to myself, um, then it wouldn't be unlimited. All the reasons that I need to be uh, keeping this to myself, I can just prove in this video. So, um, as of now, the way I can record the game that life is trying to start on me is um, I said and thought something very brilliant to myself earlier that solved all my problems. And then I was distracted and forgot what it was. And it's sort of this uh, this little little treat of like, um, oh, you almost had it, but you just forgot it for no reason. And that's just how life is, like all that stuff, right? So I'm just going to try and go over everything that kind of got summarized to lead up to that realization. Um, and I think that in a way, I will have found a way to say it better than, I re than whatever it was I didn't say earlier. Uh, so... The issue with being successful, the issue with being rich is that you're not just with a lot of money, you're not just with a lot of stuff, you're not just happy. What's happening to you is a social relationship. When you're rich, when you're successful, Everybody who watches you, everybody who sees you, everyone observing you, wants to know why you get to be rich and they don't. They're not attacking you though. They're attacking life for, without saying it out loud, bringing someone into their life to sort of say, Hey, this person, they figured it out and you didn't. They have it and you don't. And they don't even care. This creates aggression. This creates hostility. And so people worry about the money and having the money. But you've got to worry about your relationship with other people and how you justify being successful, being rich when they cannot do that for themselves. Logan Paul, for example, no, Jake Paul, for example, got Rich Young, right? And the entire time people were dissing, people were saying he's reckless. There were those videos of, of him causing scenes, causing problems. And you think he's a spoiled rich kid. And that's all it was. But consider it like this. If you're rich, when you're rich, people are going to ask you to answer to why they still have problems, to why they are suffering, to why they don't have what they want and you do. And if you don't answer that question, you don't care about their problems. You don't have any concern for anyone else. And so your relationship with society at that point will turn into you being a reckless deviant who shouldn't have his money, who shouldn't have any of the things he has because he has no concern for anyone else in society. And that's the problem with these rich kids. If someone ever gets you to say that it is unfair for you to be rich, then you agree that it is unfair and now society can be more aggressive in taking that from you. If you say that you have what you have because you're just better than everyone, then you think you're better than everyone. And now society can try you harder, challenge you. There's a piece of uh, a plank that goes to uh, the rail here, on the floor right here. There's a plank here. Can you see that? Hold on. Is it is it visible on here? Dang, that looks that looks different on my that looks different from my point of view. Okay, there it is. Um, 
I can add a rule to it right now that says every time I see this plank, it's a reminder to have a good day. I can keep that to myself and I can keep it held in my mind. Seemingly no attachment to physics, seemingly no attachment to life other than that I'm choosing to give it something. So long as I maintain that structure of logic, then even if it didn't happen in a way that electricity surged through the plank, it is still being used to remind me to have a good day. This is ultimately what I think we do with the materials that we turn into computers. We just give them rules, we give them friction, we give them energy, and we organize that energy until it can display for us. Now, of course, you can go back to the idea that, no, it's just things that are already happening that we're turning into something else. I really don't want to argue with you anymore. I was arguing with somebody earlier who said that life is bad. And I argued that life was good. And I made my point effectively. And what they said in response was that even if I'm right and life is good, to their perspective, life is bad because they just lost the argument. This person puts effort into choosing to see the bad and tells me that I must change their mind as they vehemently refuse to accept anything other than a bad life. And that if I don't, then I cannot have a good life because they're having a bad one. Notice how I'm crazy, how I'm insane. I'm a fool. I, I'm too open. I don't care about certain things. But the entire time, I'm saying that it is possible for me to have a good life. I feel solid. I feel strong. I feel very close to it, as if it's already happening. The people around me have a limitation in their thinking that tells them that if they can't disprove it, then they are taking too much of something to be happy. And so they must agree to be sad to respect this limit. I argue with the limit. I say that it doesn't make sense. And much like the good or bad argument, the limit says that if it is wrong, then that's a proof of limitation and therefore it is still right. That the limit being limited is proof that things are limited. Even if I prove that things are unlimited, the fact that it was wrong suggests this idea of limitation. And so the issue is proving that life is unlimited so that you can justify being happy, justify being successful without accepting some backfire of limitation. I tell a guy it's possible for me to change my race. It's possible for me to fly. It's possible for me to be rich and successful and happy. He thinks I'm crazy. Life doesn't work that way. He says that if I really believe what I am saying, 
then I believe in this thing that he considers to be stupid because he considers me to be stupid. And if I don't believe that stupid thing, then I don't believe what I'm saying. He says, if you really believe that, then do this stupid thing right now. Now, as a younger person, I fell for these traps and I attempted to believe so hard that that stupid thing was possible if it would help me win this argument, if it would prove that things were unlimited. But it was a trap because at that point, I couldn't believe it. Not only because it wasn't what I was saying, but because it was a limitation that purposely gripped things to make what I was saying impossible. But think about it like a computer and not a computer brain. We're just talking about a device, an Evis. If I tell you I'm gonna take chemicals, metal, plastic, and turn it into something that you can see ideas, images, thoughts, thinking on before you know it exists. If I tell you that I'm going to take cardboard and turn it into a functioning computer, you might say something like, okay, make the cardboard do this right now. Make the cardboard What is it? All I got is electricity here to say. And I would say, you almost got me there. But what I want it to occur is not going to occur the way you think because of your limitation on it being possible. Meaning all the things that I say, all the things that I believe at this point in my walking, at this point in my confidence are true. But the people around me think that in order for it to be true, it has to happen in a stupid way. It does happen. The things that I say do happen. But because they did not happen in that stupid way, which was the prideful bet that these limiters were making, then I did it wrong. I lied. I faked. But here's the thing. I made this argument here. And you added this to it and told me to go this way instead of where I was going. And you connected that and tried to call it my pride. I'm realistic. So I don't fall for the traps of stupidity. I say it's possible to fly. Somebody says... All right, jump off of this railing right now and fly. Obviously, they don't believe I can fly. And I believe that there's more work that needs to be done. But if I don't do it right then, then I don't really believe it according to their limitation. But if I do it, I'll get hurt and it proves me wrong. In my experiences being rich, being successful, being unlimited, I have felt guilted in the past by people who claim that they could not understand it, that it was not fair. The idea was life is not unlimited because this person over here is still limited. And if you don't care to solve their problem then it is unfair to be unlimited. I reason with people, I listen to them talk. They're afraid of being stupid. 
And we're not talking about jump off a cliff right now to prove that you can fly to somebody who's not listening and doesn't believe it, stupid. We're talking about the kind of stupid that keeps defying and saying that it's possible to be happy, that it's possible to be rich, that it's possible to get the things that you want when everything around you so aggressively keeps denying it. No one is being that level of stupid. I am. Now, let's say that somebody is walking around saying that life is limited and that's the only thing that makes sense. And so every time they talk, every time they influence, they're pushing things together. They're making things limited. They're, they're taking what's there and saying that it's only getting smaller. Every time they influence the situation, every time they interact with the situation, instead of adding, it's almost like they're taking. And so things are losing. But if I, if I say that things are more possible, that more is happening than we can comprehend, that more is possible than we can currently comprehend, and that this is evident in something occurring in the first place, then every time I interact with life, I create a friction that adds to the energy of what's occurring. Earlier today, I got stuck on the problem of explaining why energy cannot be created or destroyed. I wanted to say something different, something that gave a better implication. Still thinking about it, but in the creation of energy, in the creation of what's possible, I think that by being a part of existence, by being a part of everything that's happening, that when I go around acting in an infinite way, when I go around constantly saying and demanding that our problems get solved, that, that things get better, that my friction creates the energy that eventually materializes as those better experiences in the future. And if you think about it, those things that we can't believe happening right now, those things that we fully believe, that we fully accept, but that we just can't experience happening right now. That space in the future of where we're gonna end up and what we're doing is being materialized by the friction, the energy we create and what we're doing now to go that way. And so someone says that there's not enough I say, what we're doing is literally making more as we go on. The energy that we create by interacting with each other is being added to existence, always. Now to solve the problem of energy not being able to be created or destroyed, I think that it's possible that if energy is being created, then it's being created into a space that has infinite room for it because that space has no definition. And so energy can keep being created into this space. The argument that there must be bad that comes with the good. It's a realistic model. It keeps us sane, keeps us embraced for the negative possibilities. But here's what I think. There's a better way to put this. That if there's something bad, then there has to be something good. But if there's something good, then there doesn't have to be anything bad. My reasoning 
an infinite existence in which there is enough possibility of room space for us to do everything we wanted without there being any problems would always be able to take something bad and turn it into a good thing. But it would never need to take something good and limit it into something bad. In the time that I spent suffering, I've come across a number of claims about why life is limited. And I've dedicated my time, my philosophy to saying and proving and doing that those limitations don't make sense in order for things to be where they are right now. There are people who want me to lose what rationalizes me getting good things. There are people who want to add their limitation onto me. And that is ultimately why I forgot whatever beautiful thought I had earlier. This logic gate is that because I don't know it, then I can't have it. But I believe that it is true whether I know the exact words that I said it in last time. And with that confidence, with that bet, I am continuing to go. Even against the argument that because I don't remember what I said, that it's forgotten, it's lost, and no longer affecting the environment. I would even put my life on the idea that it started so hard that I almost didn't need to say it. So every limiting observer in the environment is questioning me, compressing me. And with their limited segment of view saying, be infinite in my limited thinking. And if I don't take their game, then they will justify aggression, getting close, causing me problems. Now here I know that this is along the lines of what I forgot to say, and that there is somebody right now who believes that they have beat me in this argument if I don't remember what it is. But I know that I am only struggling to remember because they refuse to accept it. They refuse to see things in an unlimited way. They're really just refusing my success. This is the kind of guy that while saying all these things are impossible will claim that if you get it, you need to let them have it or else it isn't fair. But if you spent all the years, all the work, making it possible, making it reality, and they spent all their years saying that it cannot happen, that it will not occur, then that is why they do not have it. It is not your fault. So you owe them no explanation.
I can sense new aggression starting on new limitations, but really those limitations were just avoiding hearing me say the whole thing. Once again, something that claims to be limited cannot see unlimited because it is limited. That is not my fault. And at this point, I do split away from your perspective. So as I accept my success, accept my wealth, accept my happiness, and I'm challenged by people to justify it, I ask them to instead justify why it makes sense for them not to have it. And if they cannot, then perhaps the frustration should not be taken out on me, but on whatever they thought justified it before. Because as it goes, here, here's somebody's, somebody's just saying, you need to say whatever you said, because if not, I'm not accepting it. And I, I, I'm ignoring that. They're purposely, they're purposely saying, do something I won't let you do. So I'm ignoring that shit, it's annoying. The last thing I'll say is when you accept the idea that you're not connected to life, when you accept the idea that the fact that there's light coming out of a light bulb, that you don't have a relationship with it, that it somehow isn't interacting with you, that it somehow isn't in a state of change, in a state of of occurrence similar to yours that requires it to communicate and negotiate then you've pulled yourself away from the rest of society and made it so that these people like myself who continue to hold on to the idea that everything that's happening can be communicated with and negotiated with are changing what occurs at an intricate level beyond what you think is possible, beyond what you're comprehending, beyond what you're grabbing onto. And because they've attached themselves to this so well, their change occurs smoothly and without problems. The issue with limiters is, while saying things are limited, they also say that they should have what they want. And that in itself is an explosive collision. Uh, somebody wanted me to forget that that was the last thing I was supposed to say here. Whoever this is, you're the one causing it. I mean, at this point, I'm dropping you, dude. Like, you have no arguments here. You have nothing. And and the fact that you keep going is just so annoying. You said you were ignoring it. What the heck? Come on, bro. That shit is annoying, bro. But, yeah. I realize that I can justify all these things. And the only thing holding me back was the idea that I needed to answer some question about why somebody else's life is limited or else it wasn't fair. Me making my life unlimited automatically serves everyone else. 
because I continue to explain and rationalize why it's possible. It makes sense to them. They all see that by seeing it, believing it first, they create friction that makes it possible in ways that are beyond the idea of a still physical image of everything happening right now with nothing being capable of being added. That's collapsed. Hated that shit, dude. These people have the intention to keep going against me anyway. But I don't owe anyone who is purposely choosing to limit things an explanation for why I get to be unlimited. So it's fair.